It's time for one of my toughest tasks of all time, a ranking of every single TV show I've ever seen. What's going on guys, I'm Chris and welcome back to another video. Possibly my biggest tier list of all time is I'm doing a ranking of every single TV show I've ever seen. Before I get into this thing, be sure to hit that like button, comment down below your favorite TV shows of all time as well as what tier list you would have put these shows in. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to help me reach my goal of 85,000 subscribers here on the channel. And make sure to check out the Unusual Couple podcast link down below for weekly episodes over there. We have a blast with it. Now before I get into this tier list, I want to talk about some of my rules for this tier list. For starters, I'm not including any childhood TV shows from like Nickelodeon or Disney Channel just because that would make this tier list way too long. Plus, I might just do an individual tier list devoted to like Nickelodeon shows or Disney Channel shows. Number two, this does include shows that are still ongoing, for example, Stranger Things or The Mandalorian. Shows that have multiple seasons or maybe even just one season that I've seen every episode of, we're just waiting for the next season. And then of course, this does include shows that are done fully that I've seen every episode of. There are a few shows on here that I'm watching for the first time right now, but I've seen multiple seasons of. Haven't seen every episode, but they still made the list because I've seen enough of the show to speak about it. And lastly, if a show's not on this list, unless I forgot it, I haven't seen it. So Succession, The Sopranos, Shameless, these are a few big shows on my watch list right now that I haven't seen. Therefore, they're not on this. I didn't forget them. So before you go commenting, you forgot Succession. I just haven't seen Succession. All right, enough of that. Let's get down to business and rank these TV shows. All right, so the tiers I have today are S tier, A tier, B tier, C tier, D tier, E tier, and F tier. Typically, I abandon E tier, but because there's so many shows, I feel like there might be a few that can go in there. We'll have to see what happens. These are fully randomized. Again, these are all the shows I've seen in my life, to my knowledge, not including childhood shows. Let's dive right into this thing, starting with That 70s Show, which I was surprisingly a little late to the party on. Didn't watch this for the first time until 2018. Fell in love with it. This show's hilarious, especially the earlier seasons. Unfortunately, the last season or two just don't hit the same once Eric leaves. It doesn't have the strongest final season, but the majority of this show is consistently enjoyable seeing the gang get up to their shenanigans in the basement you know with their rotation or whatever it may be whether it's red calling someone a dumbass how could i not love this show it's either a or b for me i think in the grand scheme of things i'm gonna go top of b tier just because again it does fall off a little bit at the end if it had been consistently great through and through i could go a tier but it's one of my favorite sitcoms i might have to do one a ranking exclusively of my favorite sitcoms now that i think about it moving on though we've got invincible with only one season out season two comes out in november as of filming this. I enjoy that first season of Invincible quite a bit. It's brutal as hell and doesn't hold back from that at first. In the first episode, I was like, huh, what are we getting into? We find out pretty quickly. The voice cast is incredible. It's a very interesting story. And what's cool about it is I've never really delved into the source material, so I'm unfamiliar with everything that we're about to watch. Creates a world really well. I don't know if I can go S tier. I know a lot of you guys are probably like, S tier, S tier. I just don't rewatch it much, and that's why I can't go S tier, and I have to take into account all the shows on this list, so I'll go top of B tier right now, um, which is no shot at the show at all. It's really well made. I just can't go A or S at this moment. After season two, I definitely could, and a rewatch, I can maybe push it higher. Top of B feels appropriate right now. Next, we got Cobra Kai. Cobra Kai never dies, baby. Uh, check out my reaction series to every episode of this show if you guys haven't. I'll link that up above or down below. I adore Cobra Kai. It is the perfect way to go about a legacy sequel. I mean, you've got the old characters from the Karate Kid trilogy brought back, and then you've also got this new generation of karate kids, essentially, and the characters are lovable. It's a great world. It is a very, very enjoyable show. Now, I don't think it's a god-tier show. I adore Cobra Kai, as you guys can probably tell, and it's one of my favorites, but I can't go S-tier. That's reserved for a select few. I'll go A-tier with Cobra Kai. I know people fell off of this, and people sort of say after season two, the show falls off. Not in my house. I don't know about that. You know, season five is my favorite season because at a certain point, the stakes feel even bigger. Yes, it gets cheesy, but it embraces that. It's never strayed away from the fact that it is a cheesy show by nature. Love it. Love where they're headed with it. And I think this final season going to end with a bang. Then we've got The Boys. We have three seasons of this show so far, still waiting for season four. And of course, we have the spinoff coming out in about a month now. Uh, the Boys is amazing television. You've got the character of Homelander, who's so intriguing. He's a despicable person, but anytime he's on screen, I'm more interested. I'm like, what is he up to now? Then you've got The Boys themselves and their inner conflict. But the show is brutal. It's gory. It doesn't hold back in the language department. And it's a very mature show. 
but it kind of turns the superhero genre on its head, making for a really fresh and unique take. And unlike any other superhero content we're getting today, it's an A-tier show for sure. And honestly, it might be a better show than Cobra Kai. It's really hard to compare the two because they're vastly different. Rewatchability wins, so I'm gonna put Cobra Kai over it. But The Boys is an A-tier show no matter what. Next, we've got The Mandalorian. This is the way, for two seasons at least, because we do have that third season, unfortunately, which was a huge drop-off in quality. The third season of this show felt unnecessary. It meandered. It didn't know who the main character was. Certain episodes were entirely filler and I'm not just saying that to be like, oh, it was filler, like literally meant nothing in the grand scheme of the season. Seasons one and two, however, are some of my favorite Star Wars content ever, so I have to factor that in. It is the lowest a B-tier show because seasons one and two are that good. Season three has its moments to shine, but does waste a lot of characters and doesn't feel very necessary in terms of advancing Mando or Grogu as characters. Like, they just feel like they're hanging out to wait to be useful, which was unfortunate. I would say The Mandalorian, as much as I want to go A tier with it, I'll go B tier right now because of season three. Like truly, that weighed it down a lot for me. Seasons one and two, amazing, but season three, I can't look past. So I'm gonna have to say it is top of B tier for me over Invincible, because I'd rewatch it over these. Um, and again, seasons one and two hold so much weight to me, but if season three wasn't here, this would be arguably S tier, but I got a factor in season three and that took a hit. Next we got Secret Invasion. This is not the worst show I've ever seen, so it's not F tier, but it's definitely flawed. I would go, I mean, let me think about this. In terms of the MCU Disney Plus shows, it's pretty low. It's got a really bad series finale. Mm. This is a weak show. I think I go E tier with Secret Evasion. Like, <laughs> it's not outright F because there are enjoyable moments. Like if I hated this show, I wouldn't have sat down and binged at all. I would have given up eventually. So that's why it's not outright F tier, but E tier for Secret Invasion feels appropriate considering the fact that it dropped the ball in the finale hard, making no real sense. And there are so many concepts in the show that went nowhere. It's a very frustrating show. This is a prime example of how the MCU Disney Plus template can be really draining to a show and make it uninteresting as a viewer. E tier, and that might be being nice, honestly. Next, we got The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, one of my preferred MCU Disney Plus shows, like in my top three for sure. My girlfriend adores this one. I think this one gets way too much hate. People dismiss it for some reason. Um, it's nothing amazing to me, but it is one of the better structured MCU Disney Plus shows that gave us a new Captain America, explored Bucky's trauma and him moving on in life after Avengers Endgame, plus, it has John Walker, who's a fascinating sort of anti-hero character throughout the show. I'll go C tier right now with Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I take these shows over it, but middle of the road right now, literally the middle of this tier list feels appropriate. I do think it gets way too much hate and gets lumped in with the bad MCU Disney Plus shows, when in reality, it's one of the better ones. Then you've got WandaVision, the one that started it all for the MCU Disney Plus shows. I've always been like, eh, on WandaVision. I think originally we were all caught up in that week to week hype and theorizing. And then once it was all said and done and the dust settled and time passed, I was like, huh, this show is very flawed. I would go D tier. I do think it's probably better than the Secret Invasion show we got, but WandaVision still nothing special. The week to week hype was better than the actual product we got. They faked out everybody for worse, like not for the better. Like they gave us Pietro, and we were like, oh my god, it's Evan Peters' Quicksilver, and then it went nowhere, they made a stupid joke with it. This show dropped the ball hard, Monica Rambeau was the best part to me, and it could have just been a movie, or like a two or three hour thing, didn't need to be nine episodes. Next we got How I Met Your Mother, the first show I ever actually binge watched. I don't despise the finale as much as a lot of other people, I don't think it ruins the show. Um, I do think the ninth season is the weakest, and I just don't like the structure of it, where they're at like a wedding the whole time, but I really, really like this show, and it's such a feel-good show for me, it comforted me for many years, and I still go back to the show every now and then, I'm like, man, this has some classic sitcom episodes, so I think I'd take it over that 70s show, if I'm going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the two, like if I had to watch one for the rest of the time, I might go that 70s show below it. It's, to me, nostalgic, so I think I would probably give it the slight edge over that 70s show right now. So I put it right there in B tier. That feels appropriate. Yes, the series finale's weak. So are a lot of other sitcom finales. It's really hard to stick the landing for some reason for them. So I'm fine with putting it there. Next, we got Friday Night Lights. This is a show that I binge watched back in 2014 or something, a long time ago. I enjoy it, but if I like this one enough to put it really high on the tier list, I would have rewatched it by then. And it's been almost a decade since I've revisited this show. I'd go C tier with it, right behind the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Like, it's got some great moments. Season one in particular is so binge worthy, uh, but it falls off in season two. There's like a murder plot, and it's so bizarre. 
And then the other seasons aren't very memorable when he goes to a different school. So season one alone would be like B to A, but the whole show, it's like a C tier show. Got its enjoyable moments, gets a little too dramatic for its own good at times, and introduces some wacky, wacky plot lines. So C tier for Friday Night Lights is fine. Middle of the road show. Next we've got You, which has four seasons currently. The fifth season will be the final season. I think this show maybe should have ended a while ago. As much as I've enjoyed my time with it, I think it should have ended a while ago. I love season one and two. Three was good, but after the storyline of season three concludes, which I won't spoil, it gets a little um, repetitive and I'm not really sure where we're headed. I wasn't crazy about season four. There's a reveal in season four that should have been made a lot earlier. It didn't really do it for me overall. It's my least favorite season. I would still go B tier with it. There's gonna be a lot of B tier shows, by the way, because that's like a solid show if it's in the B tier. I've enjoyed you a lot. I'm just trying to figure out where to pin this. I would go over these two sitcoms right here just because it's hard to pin. Actually, you know what? We're making some shifts in the middle of the video. I'm gonna put you right here. So I think Invincible and Mando go over it. And you know what, actually I'm fine with that. I'm fine with where we're at right now. B tier is gonna be stacked, I just realized, by the way. Next we've got Bridgerton seasons one and two, and I also am including Queen Charlotte in here just because I didn't want to make it its own thing. I binge watched this back in July with my girlfriend Cam. She finally got me to watch it, so I watched all that. Really enjoy the world of this show. Season two is my favorite by far, exploring Anthony Bridgerton and his relationship as seen on the poster. I would say Bridgerton is a well-made show. It's a B-tier show. I would go back of B-tier right now. Like, I would watch all the shows above it over Bridgerton, but I en ended up enjoying it way more than I thought. I was so hesitant about it. I was like, please don't make me watch it. But I ended up really enjoying it when it was all said and done, and we're getting the third season soon. So call me a Bridgerton fan. I'm on board. But next we got Pam and Tommy, the miniseries from Hulu. Uh, look, I'm honestly going to go top of D-tier with this. Like, don't get me wrong. I was entertained, but I will never watch it again. It was well acted, well made, and a fascinating glimpse into that real life story. But uh, but aside from like Sebastian Stan and Lily James' performance, I just don't really see myself going back to this one, so D feels appropriate. Well made for sure, but D tier is the highest I can go. Then we got The Bad Batch. Look, The Bad Batch has its highlight moments, but a lot of it feels more like the filler episodes of Clone Wars than anything else, so I'm also going to go D tier with The Bad Batch. Uh, over WandaVision and Pam and Tommy, because it still has some highlight moments for me, especially in season one, but really and truly, I just can't go too high with it. When there's two other Star Wars animated shows, they're so much better. Bad Batch and D tier only feels right. Then we've got What If. I am not crazy about What If at all. I like the premise, but its existence isn't very necessary. The Doctor Strange episode's great. The zombie episode's great. It's not an F tier show, um, but I put it like pretty low. I'd honestly go like Secret Invasion over just because of the relevance factor. I don't ever see myself going back to What If. I don't want season two. I don't hate the show, but it's like an E tier show for me where I watched it all once and I never see myself going back and watching it again. Then we've got Squid Game, the phenomenon from Netflix. Netflix. We're getting a second season, though I'm not sure I feel about that. Season one was some of the most binge-worthy TV I've seen. It hooked me out of the gate. Uh, the, I think the sixth episode or one of them is, oh my god, it's gut-wrenching, but it's so well done seeing them survive these games and how deep into the Squid Games can they go. I would say not an A-tier show because it did, it did fumble the ending to me. I've thought about that a lot. The ending fumbled the bag. However, I will go B tier with it. I do think it's quality television for so, so long. I wouldn't go over Mando. I wouldn't go over Invincible or You. And I take these sitcoms over it. I even take Bridgerton over it. It's still a B tier show. And I told y'all, B, B tier is about to be stacked because that's like the eight out of 10 range, like really solid overall. But I'm going, I'm going B tier with it. And season two could either make that go up or down. I have this weird feeling season two is going to make it eh. Next, we got American Vandal. I don't know if anyone here's even watched this show. It was like a mockumentary type thing on Netflix. There were two seasons. Jimmy Tatro is in one of them. And um, it's like a true crime parody, essentially. I watched this in like a few days with my freshman roommate in college. I would go, honestly, E tier. I've never really thought about this show since I watched it. I just keep a running catalog of all the shows I watch. Season one was funny. Season two was pretty dreadful for me to sit through. I'm going to go back of E tier. Like, I can't go outright F tier with it. It's not that bad. But, um, yeah, this was not really the move. Next, we got Miss Marvel, a delightful little MCU show that I think gets too much hate. I take it over some of the others on this tier already. I go C tier with it. Um, probably like middle of C tier. I take Falcon and Winter Soldier over it, not by much, but Miss Marvel gets way too much hate. I'm excited to see this character in the Marvels and that show and it has the coming of age feel. It nails it. So really enjoyed it. Wish they focused more on her in high school as opposed to getting almost globe spanning at a certain point, but, uh, really dug the high school coming of age vibes the show provided. Next we got House of the Dragon. We'll talk about Game of Thrones later, but for now we're talking House of the Dragon, the prequel show. We only have one season. Season two will come out eventually. 
I loved what we got with House of the Dragon. On a week-to-week -week basis, I was tuned in. It feels like early Game of Thrones with the politics. The action is great with what we got. It was limited, but I can tell they're setting up this prequel world and we're leading up to some battles. That has been teased. I'm between A and B, and this is super difficult for me, as always. These tiers are so tough, but I'm gonna say... I take it over Squid Game, over Bridgerton, over... See, that's where I go. The sitcoms, really, I do I enjoy those shows a lot. I'll put it right here for now. I'll put it in B tier, but middle to high B tier. I think after we get a few more seasons and build out this world more, I can go higher. But I look at it and I go, it is a spinoff, and I, I have to pay respect to the original, which we'll talk about here in a second. But next we got Seinfeld. This is one of the easiest A tiers I've ever given. Damn near an S tier show. Like, I'm, I think this might actually be the first S tier. You know what? It is. This is one of the funniest sitcoms of all time. This is a hilarious show. I just realized, by the way, that there's like a, whenever I grab the picture, there's like some text over the Seinfeld part, but we're going to roll with it. My OCD will not let that get to me. And Seinfeld's an S tier show. I mean, this is a top tier hilarious comedy that you could throw on any day and laugh your ass off. I know it's weird comparing a sitcom to like a serious drama show, but Seinfeld is like one of the ultimate sitcom shows ever. It is effortlessly hilarious. Some of the sharpest writing we've seen in a sitcom and just the scenarios we get into in that show. So hilarious. This is a timeless sitcom show that will always make me laugh my ass off. So it's going S tier. Next we got Hawkeye, which I'm higher on than a lot of people. I love the holiday season vibes. Kate Bishop's a great addition to the MCU. Of course, you got a sort of passing of the torch from Clint to Kate. Yelena is in here. I'm going over the Falcon and Winter Soldier. Do I go B tier though? I look at what's in B tier. It's not on that level. I'll go top of C tier. Now I know people could be like, what? I thought you really liked Hawkeye. C tier is not bad. It's not. I say it is a C tier show. I can't go B with it because I look at what's in there. I'm like, that's high quality TV. Um, but yes, yeah, C tier feels appropriate for Hawkeye right over the Falcon and Winter Soldier. Moving on though, we've got Breaking Bad, top of S tier. This is one of the greatest shows of all time. I, I really encourage anyone out there who still hasn't watched it to go do so immediately. Vince Gilligan created this world wonderfully and we're not done talking about him yet, but Walter White's character arc from beginning to end, one of the best written characters in television. I love the character Jesse Pinkman, Saul Goodman, probably the best straight up drama show ever created. We follow the rise and fall of certain characters through their corruption and their struggles. As the show unfolds, it gets better and better with Gustavo Fring and iconic TV villains and episodes, but it genuinely has some of the most riveting, best written episodes of TV I've ever seen. There's a run at the end of season four, unprecedented, and then season five is the best season of the show, in my opinion. This show deserves all the accolades and more. I don't speak for the fandom. A lot of the fandom is so toxic online, and it makes me sick. Like, I love Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, but so many, like, fanboys are, like, so avidly against liking any of the TV shows. They're like, it's not Breaking Bad, blah, blah. And it becomes off as pouty, and it honestly turns people away from watching Breaking Bad, which makes me sick. It really does. So, I don't, I don't like when people are, like, so annoyingly Breaking Bad. It's like, yes, it's a fantastic show, but you don't need to be an asshole to everyone else out there who hasn't seen it because you're just deterring people from watching greatness. That's all I have to say about that. Next, we got Wednesday with Jenna Ortega. This was a hit on Netflix last year. And the more I sit with it, the less I like it. And I'm not saying it's bad. I did enjoy the mystery of it all. And I was pretty high on it when it first came out, but it's not a B tier show. It's a C tier show. For now, I would go top of C tier because I really did enjoy the murder mystery vibes of it and sort of like the investigation side of things, you know, Wednesday Adams trying to crack the case, but I wasn't crazy about the ending and some of it was just a little too cheesy for me, but I still enjoyed it. Nonetheless, C tier, very enjoyable watch. Next, we got Game of Thrones. This is the only show that's going to get a pass on this list for the final season and how it ended. For seven seasons was the best TV I may have ever seen. I mean, the Battle of the Bastards and Winds of Winter, the finale of season six, like the last two episodes, some of the most jaw-droppingly great cinematic television I've ever seen. It creates this world and is so epic in scale. You've got battles and, and dragons flying around, but underneath all that, there's this political drama. I've never been more shocked watching a show for the first time with its ability to kill off major characters and not even bat an eye. It takes risks and it pays off. It's so well written. I don't love the way the series ended. I think that maybe years from now I could warm up to it more. I think they dropped the ball with certain character endings and it really upset me. But seasons one through seven, some of the best TV I've ever seen. It's an S tier show because of that. Breaking Bad ended better, but Game of Thrones is right behind Breaking Bad. Both shows all time great TV shows without question. Next we've got The Last of Us. I'm going A tier with The Last of Us. I'm honestly gonna go 
not top of A tier, but it's tempting, let me say that much. I'm going, is it over the boys or not? I think I go right behind the boys, right behind the boys. But The Last of Us is such a fantastic show. It adapted the game really well while still making certain elements its own. I love the Bill and Frank episode. I know that's a hot take, I guess, but I loved it. It was heartbreaking and a beautiful love story. Then you got the acting from Bella Ramsey and Pedro Pascal, their chemistry is unmatched. It captures all the big moments from the games, makes the story its own. I've been hankering to rewatch and replay the games. I mean, this is some of the best media ever created, like The Last of Us World. This show was gonna be A tier no matter what. I think the reason it's not S is because I had played the game before, so it wasn't like as shocking to me when I watched the show play out. It was like a great adaptation, but if I hadn't played the games and watched this for the first time, it'd probably be S tier, if that makes sense. Next, we've got 13 Reasons Why, and before you all laugh at this and say F tier, F tier, I'm gonna change your whole world. You ready? Look up pretty much it on YouTube and look at their 13 Reasons Why videos, you will appreciate this show in a whole new light. You will view it in a comedic lens and you will get a great kick out of it. Season one is like fine, like it's the best season of this show objectively and it's tragic at times and deals with really serious subject material. But as you get into seasons two, three, and four, the show gets more and more ridiculous, more and more cheesy, more and more nonsensical. And by the time season four rolls around, you got a whole episode of people hallucinating in the woods, seeing wolves, it's crazy. There's a whole episode where the beginning is like a futuristic flashback and this dude is envisioning them as cyborgs like the main characters <laughs> It is hilarious if you watch it in a non-serious way. So as wild as this show gets, I still care about the characters to a certain degree. A lot of them are horrible people, but I'm so intrigued to see how their interactions go down. It's like, this is not an A tier show. This is not an S tier show. Um, it, realistically, it's probably like a C tier show, but from like an enjoyment standpoint, it would be S tier if that makes sense. Cause I love watching this with the pretty much it commentary tracks. It makes this such an entertaining time. Objectively, it's like C to D, but enjoyment, it's S. So I just wanted to make that clear. I am gonna go top of C tier with it, just cause I can't go that high with 13 Reasons Why. You know, it's pretty ridiculous near the end, but my God, those commentary tracks are electric and it makes this show so much more enjoyable. All right, so next up, we've got the Obi-Wan Kenobi show, which was one of the biggest disappointments for me personally ever. You brought back Ewan McGregor and you brought back Hayden Christensen as Vader. And this was after 17 years waiting after Revenge of the Sith, and the best they can give us is a six episode Disney Plus series. This should have been a movie. It would have made one and a half billion dollars. I'll die on that hill. They focused on Young Lei and Reva and all these other characters. No one cares about that. We signed on to an Obi-Wan Kenobi show for Obi-Wan and Vader. That's what's on this poster right here. Why are we focusing on all these other characters? You have six episodes. So much time is wasted. I was so infuriated with so much of the show. <sighs> It just doesn't even exist to me, really. This is going in D tier, and I, because it does have some great quotes, but it's it's almost like an E tier, almost like an F tier show. Like, what are they doing here? I'm gonna throw this uh, over the Bad Batch, I guess. No, do I even do that? Do I give it that much? I think Bad Batch might have some better episodes. I'll do this, I guess. I mean, even then, that's fine. It does have some great moments, but overall, such a disappointment. D tier, the highest I can go for Obi-Wan. Next, we've got The Bear. This is an incredible TV show. One of my favorite shows of all time, and honestly, it's almost S tier for me. Like, I'm looking at what I have left. I know one show, you all know it's gonna be S tier. There's a few others that might get up to that God tier level. If the bear's not S tier, it's at the front of A tier. I mean, I, I, I love this show. I watched season one last summer when it came out, watched season two this summer. I've seen both twice, I think. Some of the best TV I've seen personally, and season two in particular, I adore. So like, I look at it and I go, are there any bad episodes? No. Do I love it? Yes. I think I go top of A tier just because I'm not a huge fan of how season two ended because we need a third season. So if that's the end of the show, that would hold it back from being S tier. Um, plus, I don't want to throw everything in S tier because that is like a god tier level. Um, but the bear is almost there. I go over Cobra Kai with it. Truly one of the best written shows, best acted shows I've seen. And episode six and seven of season two, that one-two punch, unmatched really. So I enjoy that show. I love the character so deeply. I gotta go top of A tier with the bear. Then we got OBX, P for L baby. I love Outer Banks. I will watch this show. If they did a million seasons of it, I'd be watching season one million to the end of the line, baby. I'm hyped for season four. They set up Blackbeard for those who don't watch. They set up going after Blackbeard's treasure. What? I'm ready. I, I need this show injected into my veins. The summer vibes, the stupidity of these teens making these decisions, but it's also this carefree fun vibe. I love it. I eat this show up. I love it. And honestly, I know it's got its issues, but this is not a 13 Reasons Why scenario where there's like something that enhances it for me. I straight up love Outer Banks. I think on a personal level, this is what this whole thing's about, by the way. This is, I don't rank things objectively because that's just stupid. What's the point of making a video if I'm not gonna give you my opinion? Outer Banks, to me, is an A tier show. 
Now I can't go that high. I'll go back of A tier because I think these are all better shows. My enjoyment of that show is so high that I do have to go uh, pretty high. Go in A tier with that and uh, P for L. I can't wait for season four. Next we got Stranger Things. I should have just like put this here to start the video. I should have like had the tier with Stranger Things already there. This is my favorite show of all time. It's no surprise. I mean, it's something I've loved since it came out and then um, season two roll around. I love that. And then, you know, even though I've had my ups and downs with it in terms of like rewatching it over the years with the build up to season four and then season four coming out, that's solidified it as just my favorite show of all time and my favorite piece of media. There are no other pieces of media, movies or show where I deeply love this many characters. I just love this world the Duffer Brothers created. It's got the 80s nostalgia and coming of age feel, but I myself was 16 when the show came out. And so I feel like I've grown up with the characters. Like it's really just a personal show to me and it will always probably be my favorite show of all time. I've never been more excited for anything than Stranger Things season five over Endgame, over No Way Home, over even The Force Awakens, I'm willing to say. Like I'm that excited for this new Stranger Things season, the final season. And um, it's the top of the best here. You guys know this. I, I talk about it nonstop, probably irritate a lot of you guys who don't watch Stranger Things. I appreciate you for sticking around. I love the show. It's not going anywhere. This needs to be said. These two shows can coexist. You don't have to hate one and love the other. You can like them both. I love Stranger Things so much, it transcends all other media to me. Breaking Bad and Game of Thrones are still amazing though. Let that be a thing. I don't know why people have to hate on the other. Just let it be. Next we got Andor, AKA the best Star Wars Disney Plus show. Easily an A-tier show. I've been re-watching certain scenes from that and thinking about it a lot lately. I'm gonna be honest, it's going really high. It's going over the boys. Like, I love Andor that much. The prison break scene, oh my gosh, I just gave myself chills. Kino Loy, I believe is the character's name, played by Andy Serkis. His monologue, I love Andor. I cannot wait for season two. That is what Star Wars needs to be right now. Andor and Ahsoka might just save the Disney Plus shows. Andor, amazing television. If you guys haven't seen it, do yourself a favor. There's a heist, there's a prison break, there's a riot in the streets. Like, there's a few episodes that are like as a part of an arc and they build up to these big things and it's so satisfying as a viewer to watch that. Gotta love Andor, gotta love Andor. Next we got Peacemaker. Unfortunately, I don't know if we're gonna see this character again. I don't know what the future of DC is. Topic for another time, trust me, but Peacemaker is almost an A-tier show. One of the better superhero shows. It's not better than The Boys, and I don't think it's better than Invincible. I would go B-tier with it. I haven't really rewatched it since. It was really well made. It's James Gunn's baby. It makes the Suicide Squad that much better and like humanizes Peacemaker in a way. I would say B-tier. Not over Mando, not over Invincible, not over you, not over the sitcoms. I think House of the Dragon's better. Do I go over Bridgerton or Squid Game? I think I go over Squid Game, but I actually think Bridgerton is, is really good. Bridgerton's a really good show. So I put it right there in B tier. I told y'all B tier would be the most stacked, but it looks like we're getting fairly even with these tiers. Will anything make F tier? Stay tuned. Next we got Daredevil. Whew. Whew. Daredevil's an amazing show. This is an A tier show. It's not S tier to me. It is A tier, however. It's over Outer Banks. It's over The Last of Us. It's over The Boys. It's over Andor. Now I got the bear and Cobra Kai. What is it over? Is it not? I go right over Andor. I, Cause I, this is all personal preference. Cobra Kai, I've rewatched more and the bears, amazing. Daredevil's fantastic as well. It's what the Marvel Disney Plus shows wish they could be. It's what the MCU wishes it could be. We just don't get content like this much anymore. I know they're doing a Daredevil like Born Again and I'm really nervous about it because I don't know if the MCU can handle it, but Daredevil's such an A-tier show. It's an R-rated Marvel project for starters. We've got Matt Murdock played by Charlie Cox to perfection and then you've got Kingpin who's a menacing villain. Season two introduces the Punisher. Season three, never in my life have I watched like a superhero project and felt like hope was so lost. Like I genuinely was like, oh my God, there's no way he's winning this. And I just wish more superhero media was like this. Next we've got It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. This is gonna be be an instance where I know the show well enough. I'm on season four right now. There's a lot of seasons, but I've seen a lot of episodes from random seasons with my buddies. I've never in my life, I'm looking right in your camera when I say this, I've never in my life watched a show and consistently laughed my ass off multiple times more than this. Over Seinfeld, over How I Met Your Mother, over Parks and Rec. This is the funniest show I've ever seen. And I am so excited that I have multiple seasons worth of episodes to still get into because it is a delightful little treat every time I watch one of these episodes. My whole TikTok for you page is always sunny in Philadelphia. I'm, it's one of the funniest things I've ever seen. It might be the funniest media I've ever consumed. It is just my sense of humor to a T. It's dark humor. There's no laugh track. It is hilarious, like gut bustingly funny. I'm going S tier over Seinfeld. This is the funniest sitcom of all time to me. And I have so much left to watch. And the fact that I'm willing to put it in S with so much left to watch, that's how you know it's that good. I know I'm only in for a treat. This show is so good. <laughs>
funny. Speaking of sitcoms, we got The Office. It's a show that I adore and I've seen many times in my life, but it's not S tier to me. It's between A and B tier because I do not watch the last two seasons of this show. I think Michael Scott leaves in season seven or season six. I think there's nine seasons. So whenever he leaves, I think it's actually the end of season six or seven. I don't know. When he's gone, I think there's two episodes, two seasons without him. I don't watch those ever. That is unfortunate that that exists. Now the early seasons of this show and like the, the gold seasons of this show, some of the funniest sitcom episodes I've ever seen. But a lot of the episodes I skip. Like there's a lot of skip episodes in the back half of The Office. Even with Michael Scott still there, there's some skip episodes. So like the early half of the show, love it. The back half, not as strong for me. I've seen it a lot. I almost like burnt out on it for a bit because I watched it so much. I haven't revisited it in years now. I'd go B tier. I honest to God put it over these two sitcoms. Like it's a funnier show to me and I would take it over High My Mother in that 70s show. Um, but I can't go S tier with it like the other two sitcoms I have up there right now. Next we got The Punisher. You guys know I love The Punisher and he's introduced in Daredevil. I am going A tier with this show just because of Bernthal's performance and, and the fact that I just care so much about this guy, Frank Castle. Season one of The Punisher is incredible. If you like the bear and the guy who plays Richie, he's in The Punisher. Season two, a lot of people say is a big drop off, but it's like that Logan storyline where we see Punisher get to be a father figure in a way. So I've always liked seasons one and two a lot. This show, to me, I, I really... I need to watch them both again, Daredevil and Punisher, to definitively decide which one I like better. But I gotta, I gotta ride with my guy, so I'm putting him right over, uh, right over Punisher. Like these two shows, some of the best Marvel content I've ever seen. And it just comes down to personal preference. I prefer the Punisher over Daredevil. Personal preference again, but both shows are pretty much on par. They're right next to each other for a reason. Next we got Star Wars: The Clone Wars, which is uh, truly part of my childhood. So I guess this is kind of cheating in the whole breaking the childhood show rule, but I don't really care. This is a show that had multiple runs. It was on Cartoon Network for five seasons, I think, then Netflix for a season, and then Disney Plus for a season. The final season of this show, some of the best Star Wars content we've ever gotten. The Siege of Mandalore. I mean, that is, that's upper, upper echelon Star Wars. Then you've got, you know, all of the awesome arcs throughout the show. There's a ton of filler arcs, too, in retrospect. Um, so as much as I want to go S tier with it, I think I have to go A tier. Like, I adore it. It's a huge part of my childhood, and nostalgia is real. It bridges the gap between Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith. Don't get me wrong, it's got some upper tier Star Wars content, but I can't go S just because there is probably 20 to 30, maybe even 40 episodes of the show. There's like 100 plus episodes, but there's a lot of episodes that I could just never watch again. They're like super throwaway, dumb, silly, goofy. Um, so because of that, I go A tier. I go over Andor. I think over Andor just because of the end and how it does bridge that gap. Um, but my God, is it, is it great Star Wars content? And I know I'm more forgiving of, of those filler episodes because I grew up with them. And I know a lot of people don't prefer the arc storytelling where you've got four episodes and then four episodes or three episodes and it's like completely new group of characters. That can bother some people. I was just used to it growing up. And so I adore Clone Wars. It's an A tier show for me. Next, we got Ted Lasso. Through its ups and downs in season three, it's still stuck the landing, being one of the most satisfying TV shows I've ever seen, actually. I've got Jamie Tart right behind me. I don't know if you guys can see him. And Sam Lovasani right there. Love Ted Lasso. I mean, it's a delightful, feel-good show. There's really no other show I've seen that elicits that much joy each week. Um, it tackles serious, you know, mental health issues and just life issues in general, and it's relatable. Um, Ted is such a lovable teddy bear character, but you've got Roy Kent, uh, Jamie Tart, you know, Rebecca, Keeley, so many lovable side characters here. Season one's the best season. Season two is great. Season three is the worst, but still sticks the landing in the end. I can't go outright S tier, but it's high and it's high in A tier for me. Like this show, it means a lot to me. It really does. I don't know if I can go over those Marvel shows or Clone Wars or Andor. I, I think I could go over the boys though. I'll go like right, I'll go right here. I'll go right, I'll go over Andor. Um, it's an A tier show. It's almost almost in the front of a tier but i look and i go i just i can't put it over those two marvel shows cobra kai the bear and clone wars like it's right there though it's teetering it had such a fantastic finale and if season three was as good as seasons one and two it would probably be s tier next we've got barry another show that came to an end this year if you guys haven't watched barry do yourself a favor one of the best shows i've seen in a long time really satisfying conclusion um and a dark show at that it's a dark comedy bill Hader plays a hitman who ends up wanting to be an actor, and that's the setup for the show that I'll give you. It's hilarious at times, it's very dark at times, um, but it's an A-tier show, damn near S. A lot of these are. I don't watch bad shows. Like, if someone tells me the show's bad, I don't watch it. I only watch shows, usually, that I know are gonna be hit. bangers. And uh, I got into Barry really early. No one even put me on it, I don't think. I just was like, hey, I'm gonna watch Barry. And I watched it on HBO, fell in love with it. Watched it live since, I think, season two or three. 
So I'm gonna roll with a uh, high A tier for me. I'm going over Ted Lasso, but by a hair, by a hair. Again, anything above Barry Ted Lasso right now, there's either nostalgia involved or the rewatchability factor comes in. Barry, not a very rewatchable show. Like, I don't think I'll watch it again. Maybe years from now, one more time. Very dark show in the end. Bill Hader, if, you, if you've if you only seen him in comedy, he gives a incredible Emmy winning performances in this dark drama and uh, it's crazy how dark Bill Hader can go. He also writes and directs on the show. I mean, this guy can do it all. I'm excited to see what he does next. Next we've got Loki. I look at where I have the other MC Disney Plus shows on this tier and I go, you know what? It's better than those. So I'll go back of B tier with it. I think Season two could definitely enhance it for me and a rewatch could definitely help. It's definitely the best MTV Disney Plus show. This is the one that feels like it breaks away from that mold the most and feels like actually good TV. So that's fair that it goes in the back of B. Next we got Better Call Saul. Look, I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys. I have thought about this a lot lately. I've watched a lot of scenes from this show lately. And I've had a year to marinate on Better Call Saul. And it is now for the first time ever that I come to you and I tell you this, it is over Breaking Bad as of right now. People always ask me, Better Call Saul or Breaking Bad. I am officially on the Better Call Saul train. Better Call Saul ties a bow on the events after the finale of Breaking Bad while also giving us all the buildup. And I think Jimmy McGill slash Saul Goodman is the best written character in the entire Breaking Bad universe. Bob Odenkirk's performance has this really high Kim Wexler, one of the best characters, is in Better Call Saul. And then, of course, you have Mike and Gus still in here as well. This is the best written prequel of all time, and it's not even close. This is easily one of the best shows I've ever seen. And Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, like the one-two punch of those, I'm going to do this when the time is right. I'm going to watch through the whole Breaking Bad universe, and like I'm going to binge it. I'm, like, I'm going to dedicate like a few weeks of my time and just binge it. And it's some of the best media I've ever consumed. Again, don't be a toxic Better Call Saul Breaking Bad fan, please. It's just not a good look. There's no need, you can like all these shows, but Better Call Saul over Breaking Bad right now, but it's again, very close. Next we got the book of Boba Fett, which is like <laughs> the Mandalorian two and a half, sort of. It's like Mandalorian two and a quarter more so. Uh, there's one episode that's just literally just a Mandalorian episode. One of them is like Luke training Grogu, and then the rest of this is like a prequel for Boba Fett, like leading up to the events of this show, and it just isn't interesting at all. I almost wanna go F tier, like structurally speaking. Like if I were to remove two episodes, this would be the worst Star Wars content maybe ever. It's just so painfully uninteresting. You know, I have to factor in the fact that we do get Luke and Ahsoka on screen for the first time. We get Grogu training, we get uh, the Mandalorian episode, but it's like, ah, uh, it's so painful to sit through. I can't even go D, I don't think. Like, I'll go over these shows just because I would watch it over this as a whole because it does have the Luke stuff and it's got, you know, some great moments, but it's just not good. And honestly, I'm gonna move Obi-Wan down. I think Obi-Wan, uh, I'll leave it there. I'll leave it there. I don't love either, but that's fine. Next we have Star Wars Rebels. Great Star Wars content that's so underrated. I feel like underseen more so than underrated because people who watch it love it. Um, they're continuing the story of this show in Ahsoka. So now's the time to hop on the Rebels train if you haven't already. I still prefer The Mandalorian over it, um, but Rebels is awesome TV. It's somewhere in B tier. Where is the question? I would probably have to say over Loki, over Squid Game, over Peacemaker, over Bridgerton, over House of the Dragon. And then I get into the sitcom conversation. I'm like, I don't know. It's hard comparing to sitcoms. I'd probably go like right about here right now, like middle of B tier, really enjoy my time with it. I do think it peaks a little early. Like the finale of season two is my favorite episode and then everything after is still really good, but the finale of season two is such a strong point of the show for me. So that's right, right in the middle of B tier for Rebels feels good. Can't wait to see the continuation of these characters in live action. But next we've got True Detective, specifically season one. Um, I've only seen it once. I really, I wanna watch it again, but I remember it being an A tier level show. I almost feel like it would be a disservice to put this anything below A tier because it was so damn rich when I did first watch it. McConaughey, one of his better performances. Woody Harrelson gives a great performance. Um, I don't watch it as much though, so I will go back of A tier just because of the rewatchability thing, but I promise you guys this, if I had watched this again and when I do rewatch it again, it could a million percent climb higher. Again, this is my subjective ranking. Next we got Ozark, another A tier show. I told you guys, I don't watch shows if I know they're gonna be stinkers. I got on Ozark before season three came out, so I could binge that all when it came out. And then I watched that, and then season four did like two volumes essentially. Loved it. I even like the ending, which I know uh, sparked some controversy. I'm gonna go A tier with it. Now, where in A tier is again the golden question? I would go over Barry and Ted Lasso with Ozark, even, which is might, which might be crazy. But I mean, I have to remember I binge this show a bunch. It's a really well done show. It's like better call Saul Breaking Bad vibes at times. So I'm gonna go over Barry with Ozark. I can't go 
that high. And I might be overrating these two Marvel shows in, in this moment in time, but I really loved them when I first watched them. Either way, though, Ozark's an A-tier show pretty pretty comfortably. Next, we got our first F-tier show, She-Hulk. This is uh, the worst MCU Disney Plus show, some of the worst MCU content ever. The humor was a total miss, and it just got so cringe at the end when they, like, tried to break the fourth wall. Like, this show never needed to exist. It is the, it's the definition of, like, an F-tier show, like, just outright bad. Then we got Parks and Rec, which is like C tier for me. I liked it a lot when I watched it for the first time back then. You know, I watched the, the final season live on TV, actually. I think that ended in like 2014 or 2015, and that's the last time I watched it. That's a sign to me. That's a sign to me. It's an it's a C tier show. It's funny, um, but it's it's no office. People try and compare this to The Office, and I'm like, no, you, you can't do it. I, I The Office blows this away. So give me, give me C tier with it. Not terribly high. I'd go like right here. Like I enjoy... Parks and Rec, but I never really go back to watch it again. Chernobyl is next, and this is where I have to go. Chernobyl's masterfully made TV. Is it S tier? I don't think so. Is it A tier? Probably. It's so damn good, and I'm going to do the same thing I just did. I'm going to put it back of A tier, um, right behind True Detective, just because of rewatchability. Those two shows, I don't know if I'll ever rewatch them. They're very dark dramas, very serious subject matter, but they're so amazing. I have to acknowledge that, and A tier is appropriate for Chernobyl. What a well-crafted show, a little mini-series, um, devastating watch, but a must-watch in my opinion. Next, we got Defending Jacob, the first big Apple TV Plus show. I think it was actually when, when it debuted. Um, I enjoyed Defending Jacob, haven't thought about it since, and was not crazy about the ending. It didn't really give us a concrete answer to the mystery we'd been pondering the whole season, so it kind of felt pretty uh, meaningless in the end. Uh, I would still go C-tier with it because of Chris Evans' performance and uh, all the other cast involved. Names are escaping me at this moment in time. But I'm not going high. I'm going back a C-tier with it. Like, it's almost D because of how much they dropped the ball in the end. Like, it was such an intriguing mystery on a week-to-week -week basis, and then they just completely flubbed the ending. Really hard to uh, forgive in a six to seven episode thing like this when the whole show feels meaningless in the end, and that's the case here. And last and maybe least, we've got Moon Knight. Uh, <laughs> I am between D and E. Like, this show's wildly overrated. You guys know how I feel about it. The ending just didn't do it for me. It frustrates me so much with the ambiguity. Like, I'm fine with certain pieces of media having, like, ambiguous endings, but this just, out of left field, didn't really give us any clear answers. I was like, what? I'd watch The Bad Batch over it. I'd watch Obi-Wan over it. I'd watch Pam and Tommy over it. I'd honestly watch WandaVision over it. It's a shorter watch, I think, through and through, and uh, it has, like, the Evan Peters moment still. So then I go to E tier. I'd, I'd take Boba Fett over it. I'd take it over Secret Evasion, though, so I'd put it, like, right here. I do think WandaVision is better than Moon Knight um, right now. And I know that might contradict a past statement, but that's how I'm feeling right now. So that does it for my tier list ranking of every TV show I've seen. Again, a lot of these shows are still ongoing. We're waiting for a new season. A lot of these shows have already had their series finale and they're done. And I didn't include any childhood shows really. That would have been way too big of a tier, but those are pretty much all the shows I've seen. I'm, I might've forgot one or two. And if it's not on this list, I haven't seen it. So let me know what shows aren't on this list that I should include on my watch list so that I can watch them soon. But that does it. That was a big old tier list. I'm exhausted now. So be sure to hit the like button. It helps out quite a bit. Subscribe and hit that notification bell to help reach my goal of 85,000 subscribers here on the channel. It'll mean a lot. Check out the Unutical podcast link down below where we talk TV shows. All the shows in here we've probably talked about at least once over there. So check that out. My Patreon is also linked down below. Your support goes a very long way over there. But thank you guys as always for watching. Stay tuned for more content coming very soon. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.